which I'll do. I just want to put them together. I did that before I'd heard this the talks. Right. What I would like to say, just go back to a word that comes from here in my, my head, which is, yeah, some of you might recognise each other in there. Um, flourishing. Brendan McCormack from Queen Margaret's, who's been a great supporter of our work over the years, and now is on the other side of the world, he used to talk a lot, and probably still does, about flourishing. As a, as a concept or an idea about what it feels like, because it really is about lived experience, it is about how we feel. Optimal, it's, I mean, it's not the language you would speak in the pub or in the coffee room, but about positive emotions, positive relationships, growth, resilience, adapt and cope, adversity, and how our personal and social context influences. So that, for me, encapsulates a whole range of stuff. So you'll see there um, the gathering with Kathy and Betty at the front again. Um, all ages in Haddington, talking about the new dementia strategy, which I think is an example of how we can begin to put some of this stuff into practice at the meeting centre that Fiona runs and the friendship group with um, one of the uh, QMU students who's on the performing arts master's course who came to work with our friendship group. So it's happening. These things are happening everywhere. And there's a concept that we find very helpful to do that. Um, if you look at what dementia, what things about in dementia, and forget about dementia, just think about it as as um, something that, a, a problem people have to live with. We've taken the social model, or East Lothian has, which sees it not as a medical problem, but there are social things, so you're immediately into the relationships, relationship matters, into stigma, a word that's not come up today, but something ages and kills people, and we saw that during COVID. Real harm, like real harm. Meeting centres are an example of a social community enhanced place for people to be together, for peer support with people in the same boat, connected to the community and backed up by expert advice and a model which is based on promoting positive relationships with your peers, with your community, with yourself. Really, really important. Behind it is the adjusting to change model which is, change the word if you like, life happens, we get on with it. For most people, dementia is not the worst thing that's happened to them. They've had all kinds of other things in their lives. That's what we do. We adjust. We cope. So you've got people getting together for a cup of coffee. You've got communities that understand and include. And that business about understanding and being together, being in community, is what makes the difference. It's not reading about it. It's not doing a course. It's about spending time getting to know each other, breaking down barriers. Prevention. We now talk about preventing dementia. About 40%. It's maybe not for my generation, but it is for your children's generation and our, my grandchildren's generation. That is the hope and the optimism that we have of making a difference. And I have to tell you, now that I can talk about prevention instead of st dealing with people's pain about the stigma, the conversation's open. People want to talk about brains. They want to talk about memory. They want to talk about growing older. Completely transformational. I was saying to somebody this morning, Gillian, <laughs> that I've started thinking, well, maybe we're going to have a paradigm shift. And you know yourself, as soon as you start thinking that, it's happened. I think we've had the paradigm shift. Intergenerational working is the core of all of that, absolutely at the heart. This is another version of Alan's uh, 12 factors, risk factors. Suzanne, I would love to see what you would graffiti out <laughs> on that, because you've got the inactivity, the head injury, the less education, <laughs> social isolation. What you haven't got is the pain and the, the life course of that, which you've got a bit in yours, but I would, you know, I'm not suggesting we do that, but it might be something we think about. How can I, when I go out with this slide, or Alan goes out with his, take the A stuff in there? Because we know it's there, we know it's behind a lot of this. It's, you know, it's, it really needs, that narrative needs to be spelled out for people like me, I think, to take it through, and I'd really, that'd be so useful to have. And it inspires us. Well, the meeting centre is, it's inspiring the meeting centre, which is a, a place to play together and bringing different ages in and learning about what works and how we learn from each other in that space. Um, we've got links, and of course, links with QMU for us, for, for people of my age. I'm not allowed to say old gits, but people like me, <laughs> this is intergenerational. New perspective. Um, we, uh, Deborah Ritchie, who uh, used to work for the NHS many years ago, uh, did some research in uh, the day centre in North Berwick, with my mum in fact, 
And uh, one of the things that came up was that people in the day centre wanted to talk about death, they wanted to talk about people who died, they wanted to talk about dying, but the staff didn't. Because they were my generation and it's too difficult. There comes a point when you get to an age where it's actually easier to talk about death. The generation below who was providing the care and support felt uncomfortable. That intergenerational chasm was kind of really interesting. But the research brought that out, the conversation brought that out and changed the practice. You thought somebody said to me, a school person, is having dementia like being neurodiverse? Well, that is mind blowing. <laughs> that is transformational thinking. Imagine if you take ageism out, is dementia just another form of neurodiversity? I don't know, I'm just a person, but I much prefer to be neurodiverse than have dementia, and that's because of the ageism and the stigma that's built up around a brain that works differently. Mm -hmm. You'll all understand that. You understand these, those modifiable risks are all, they're about diabetes, they're about heart disease, they're about a whole range of things, they're not just about dementia. So why aren't we joining up and working together? And as I said, the new hope, the new power of what we can do by connecting, by being together, and the quality of those relationships. It isn't just being together and suffering it. Um, preventing, delaying, ameliorating. Um, we can do it. And that is a sense of great hope. And so intergenerational work has given me narratives for hope instead of despair. And that is just life affirming. So thank you, Vereen, for being the person who has guided me through that. And thank you a lot for being here today. And thank you too for coming and helping Lorene and I make this happen. And she, you have to get that dementia strategy. And there's more to go. So thank you all. It's Lorene is just going to give you some information that will enable you to be fed and know where you're going after lunch, which makes it a dementia-friendly environment. But thank you.